All right, so let's look at hypothesis testing, and this was this is going to be one where sigma's un, um, where sigma is known, and it's a two-tailed test. So we have a claim about the population mean, h naught mu is equal to some number k, and we believe that the population is, or we believe that mu is different than the value stated in the null hypothesis. So we say our alternate hypothesis is mu is not equal to k. That means it's, it could either be higher or lower. Uh, basically what we have here is this is a two tail so it's here and here. So this area plus this area would be our p our p value when we calculate it. So we will calculate a test statistic z and we'll either get a negative value or a positive value. Okay? We'll either get a uh, negative z sub x bar or positive z sub x bar. We'll get one of those and basically what we'll do is we'll if it's negative we'll look this up that'll give us this area and then we have to double it because it's this area and this area and we know that on the normal distribution on the on a normal distribution this is symmetrical so it would be this area and this area so when we find this area we'll just multiply it by two and if we get when we calculate our test statistic if we get a positive z value well, we'll just find the area that uh, that z is greater than whatever number, and that'll give us this area. And then once we get this area, we'll multiply it times 2 because we have to add this area to it also. Okay, so here we have x bar is equal to the mean of a simple random sample. Mu is the value stated in the null hypothesis, H0, and N is the sample size. And the way that we conclude the test, if our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and say the data are statistically significant at the level A, alpha. And if the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example. All right, so it says total total blood volume in milliliters per body weight, and weights in kilograms, is important in medical research. For healthy adults, the red blood cell volume mean is about mu equals 28. So that's the population mean. That's all the adults. Red blood cell volume that is too low or too high can indicate a medical problem. Suppose Roger has had seven blood tests and the red blood cell volumes were this. The sample mean is x bar equals 32.7. Now the 32.7, that is based on this average here. Take all these values, add them up, divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that would give us the 32.7. And, and the 28 here, that's... Uh, that's the mean for all the adults. These are This is just for Roger. So let x be a random variable that represents Roger's red blood cell volume. And assume that x has a normal distribution, sigma equals 4.75. So that's the population standard deviation. That's the standard deviation based on all adults. Do the data indicate that Roger's red blood cell volume is different from mu equals 28. Okay, so we just want to know is it different? Is it higher or lower? Okay, use a 0 0.01 level of significance. All right, so let's come down here and state our null hypothesis. Okay, so the null hypothesis is mu equals the 28. And our alternate hypothesis we want to know if the mean is just different from the 28. Okay, it doesn't say it. We don't want to know is it 
well in this case x bar is larger but we don't want to know is x bar larger greater than the mean the population mean we just want to know is it different okay so that tells us it's a two-tail test all right so now we need to calculate z and z is x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n where x bar is equal to 32.7 mu now well, that's the 28 sigma is 4.75 and n is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 All right, so let's come over here and get our test statistic. This is a Z is equal to X bar minus mu over the standard deviation divided by the square root of N. All right, so now we have our Z, Z value, 2.62, and remember this is a two-tail test so what we've got here hey okay, we got 2.62 and negative 2.62 so this is a two-tail so we need this area and this area okay so what we can do is we can we can look up the 2.62, okay, and that will give us this area here, and then we just multiply that times 2, okay. See, this right here, just looking this up, that's not our p-value. It's actually half the p-value because the p-value is this area plus this area. So this is the p-value over 2, and this is the p-value over two and that's because it's a two-tail test okay now let's go ahead and find the probability now I want, I want to point this out to you also when we find when we find these areas we can do the probability that Z is greater than 2.62 okay that would give us this area and then we double it Okay. But remember, to find this area, we would have to do what? 1 minus whatever that area is that we look up in the table. Whatever that number is, we would have to do 1 minus okay, to get this area. Because remember, when we look the values up, that gives us the area to the left. And so 1 minus that area to the left would give us the area to the right. Or what we could do is we could find the probability that z is less than negative 2.62 that's this value and that would give us this area to the left here so we wouldn't have to do 1 minus we would just do the area it would just be whatever value we looked up and then we would multiply that times 2 to get our p-value Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look up the negative. I might just go ahead and look up both of them and show you how it comes out the same. Okay. So let's come over here and let's get our p-value. Okay. And for, for the calculation I'm going to do, I'm going to do z is less than negative 2.62. Okay. So let's come over here to our chart and give myself a little more room here. Okay, so let's come to our chart. Now we're looking up the negative 2.62. So negative 2.6, negative 2.6 is right here, and 2. See, there's negative 2.62. 2. 
and that's 0 0.004. So our p-value is 2 times that because remember we have a we have a two tail and this point zero zero four four is that area and so we double that or multiply it times two and that gives us this total area here this area plus this area and so that's point zero zero eight eight Okay, so so remember, this was the probability that z was less than negative 2.62. That's what this was. Okay, now let's come over here and suppose we did the probability that z was greater than 2.62. I'm going to show you it's the same thing, but by looking up the negative value, we didn't have to do 1 minus the area. Saved us a little bit of work. All right. So here I've got 2.62 and this area. Okay. So this I've got the 2.62, 2.62, which is this value, 0.9956. See, there's our 2.62. Okay, so that would be 1 minus, because remember, this area is the area to the left, so we do 1 minus that, and that gives us this area to the right. And that's 0 0.9956. So if we do 1 minus 0.9956, that gives us 0 0.0044, and then I do 2 times that, because I need that area also because we have a two-tailed test and we get 0 0.0088 and so you know we get the same thing whether we look up the positive or the negative see we got the 0 0.0088 which is exactly what we got when we looked up the negative the negative value so if you have a two-tailed test if you have a two-tailed test, I would just, just look up the negative. Then you don't have to do one minus. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our problem. And so this, our p-value, and actually let me erase this. I need to add something. p-value is equal to two times that. we got to put in the two times because of the two-tailed test. So that's two times and we got what? 0 0.0044 which is 0 0.0088. All right. And this, let's compare it to our significance level of 0 0.01. And so this is greater than 0.0. Zero, 0.01. I'm sorry, it's not greater than. It's less than, isn't it? Okay. So the point zero, zero, 0.0088 is less than point zero, 0.01. So we reject H0. Okay. We reject the null hypothesis. So it seems that Roger's average red blood cell volume is different from the average for healthy adults. Okay, that would be the conclusion we come to. All right, so uh, you know that's this video. Uh, like I said in my other videos. I'm going to do these hypothesis tests for uh, left tail, right tail, two tail, where sigma is known, unknown, and the proportion P. Uh, and I'm going to do each of them in its own video. So I hope this helped. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.